Welcome everybody and thank you for joining me on Board Sports Network, your leader in board sports entertainment. I am your host, KC, and tonight's episode we're going to be going over the inaugural Baseball America season preview, where we take a look at the teams that will comprise the 2020 Baseball America season. For this season, I'm using the board game History Maker Baseball, and I'm actually going to be using the 2013 Baseball America fictional team set that is uh, available for purchase. Even though I'm using the 2013 set, it's going to be set in the year 2020, and 2013 was the first year that Baseball America came out for play games, and um, I wanted to start building up stats and career numbers for players. In this league, we're going to have we are going to have 12 teams that are going to be split into two 16 divisions, an East and a West division. The teams will be playing a 54 game season. It's going to be split into two six week segments with an all-star game coming around week seven between the first half of the season and the second half of the season. Each team will play approximately four to six games a week, depending on their opponent. If, they're, if their opponent, if the two teams are divisional opponents, they'll be playing a three game series. And if they are playing outside of the divisional play, it'll be a two game series. The main difference between the East and the West division is that the East does not incorporate a designated hitter, whereas the West does. So without further ado, Let's start out with the East. The Cincinnati Grays will be the first team up for the East Division. They play at Dot Cola Park, which is a grass field, and it's an average to a smaller size park with a grass playing surface and a seating capacity of 47,000. Their starting pitching staff consists of Max Murphy, Darren Wells, Jeff DeLone, Rafael Valdez, and Mark Upshaw. Murphy, Wells, and DeLone look to be a strong 1-2-3 combination, while Valdez and Upshaw may struggle a bit, but are still solid. They feature a solid bullpen consisting of Zane Perry, Sean Gray, Robbie Cox, Chris Page, John Sundberg, Randy Corcoran, and Richie Danielson. Zane Perry looks to be a spot starter at times and a long reliever, and Richie Danielson looks to start the season in the closing role. Danny Hargrove looks to start at shortstop. Junior Ayala will be in center field. The powerful combo of Dave Perez and Albert Miller will be at first base and right field respectively. Jim Kemper looks to get time at second base. Dorian Cooper will be spending a majority of time behind the plate. Doug Rosello will be on the other hot corner at third base, and Gary Mosby will be in left field. Next up in the Eastern Division will be the Columbus Silverhawks. They play at County Stadium, which is a grass field. It's a very large stadium and has a capacity of 77,000. The starting rotation consists of Luis Orozco, Rusty McCormick, Charlie Guerrero, Norm Walling, and Paul Fiala. Outside of Orozco and McCormick, Guerrero, Walling, and Fiala are on the weaker side and that may be the weakness of this starting rotation. The Silverhawks feature a lineup that many consider to be on the weaker side in comparison to the rest of the league. At shortstop, Jorge Gonzalez looks to lead off. Batting second is Ron Mazzoli in left field. Joey Milner will be playing third base with Ricky Royanel on the opposite side at first base. Denny Klug is looking to start in right field. Wes Horton is looking to get a majority of the time behind the dish. Kent Brunner will be at second base, and Rosario Hill will be in center field. The bullpen may be strong enough to be up to the task in order to save a few games. With Dan Fisher, Steve Hubbard, Derek Donnelly, Jeff Plum, Joey Parrott, Vicente Ramos, and Lenny Mahler, and Dan Fisher looks to be the spot starter and long reliever, while Lenny Mahler is hoping to close out a few games this season. Next up in the Eastern Division will be the Nashville Countrymen, who play in Rubicon Wireless Park, which is an average size stadium, on a grass playing field surface, and it boasts a capacity of 55,000. Harold Engel looks to be the ace of the staff, 
But after him, the staff gets pretty weak. Gary Burley will be looking to be in the second position, while Richie Rivers, Hector Diaz, and Lupe Sanchez will be the three, four, and five starters, respectively. If the bullpen is on their game, they can get a lot of strikeouts, but that's a big if. Bullpen consists of Steve Show, Carlos Ramirez, Jerry Ray, Tad Hunter, Scott Blackman, Tad Madlock, and the closer, Larry Lawless. The Countryman projected starting lineup does have some speed at the top of the order, and Gary Bonnell at second, Mike White at third, and Ramona Cruz at center field, but after that, the hits may be sparse. The cleanup batters projected to be Bill Hammond in left field, Keith McHenry in right field, Rune Ferguson at shortstop, Israel Gar- Garcia at first base, Mel Cerrone catching, and the pitcher in the ninth spot. The fourth team in the Eastern Division will be the Orlando Stars, who play in Biddy Beer Ballpark, a grass field stadium with a capacity of 41,000. The walls in this field are a lot shorter than the other ballparks in the league. The starting rotation consists of Lonnie Robertson, Herc Webster, Sergio Orta, Alex Moreno, and Victor James. And this is a fairly weak pitching staff and they don't look to go too far in too many games. The Stars may be competing for the weakest bullpen with the Nashville Countryman, as it features Gil Benziger, Craig Romberg, Brett Stoner, John Burnside, Baron Simpson, Dale Duran, and Tony O'Hara, who looks to be the starting closer. A team with a weak pitching staff usually needs their lineup to keep them in games, and the Orlando Stars, though, may not have that advantage. Fausto Arialto is looking to start in center field, Don Scooby at second base, Steve Van Gorder in left field, Tom and Glanke batting cleanup at third base, Storm Flannery looks to be on the other hot corner at first base, Freddie Geronimo will be at shortstop, Al Capuzello will be in right field, Don McGrain looks to get a majority of the time behind the plate, and the pitcher in the ninth position. The fifth team in the East Division, and the one most likely likely to contend with the Cincinnati Grays for the Eastern title, will be the Brooklyn Bombers, who play in Signal Health Park, which is a medium to large size stadium with a grass field and a capacity of 57,000. A strong starting rotation will consist of Wally Ballard, Melito Ortiz, Don Backman, Chico Loya, and Mike Bradley. Ballard, Ortiz, and Backman look to be the workhorses of the group. A bullpen that is more than capable of shutting down the opposition late in games will consist of Bobby Bishop, Roberto Morales, Nolan Anderson, Enrique Nunez, John Boudreaux, and the closer, Jimmy Tuesday. A starting lineup that could be capable of living up, living up to the Bomber nickname will be Travis Nelson at shortstop, Brian Stone in right field, Matt Hopstack at first base, Scotty Coles in left field, Pat Zeus at third base, Torrey Brown behind the dish, Avero Morgan in center field, and Chuck Gagne at second base. Our sixth and final team rounding out the Eastern Division will be the Boston Patriots. They play in City Memorial Stadium, holds a capacity of 66,000, and is played on grass. The starting rotation for the Boston Patriots looks to be their strong suit, as they feature Kurt Meacham, George Newman, Vance Hume, Sean Sullivan, and Lloyd Dempsey. These pitchers ought to take the Patriots deep into games. If there's an area of weakness on this squad, it'll be with the bullpen. If the starters get chased early, the bullpen may not be able to uh, get them back into the game. And they feature Robbie Pulaski, Tracy Reedy, Ed May, Ruben Romero, Nelson Moore, Hoyt Wilson, and closer Felix Biancolana. Starting lineup should be more than capable of putting up runs, as it features leadoff hitter Victor Bonilla at shortstop, Ryan Kennedy in left field, Cecil O'Malley at third base, fellow punisher Coy Owens at first base, Aaron Walston catching, Shadow Davis in right field, Mitch Lavelle in center, and Steve Kaiser at second base. Now we will head out west and check out the Western Division as we start with the Portland Jacks. The Jacks play in Golf Oil Park, which is a very large stadium, on a grass field and has a capacity of 67,500. The Jacks' starting rotation is going to run into trouble all year. Outside of Ace, Mackie Wright, Nico Valley, Mark Buckley, 
Francisco Torres, and Chris Parrish are all going to struggle. The bullpen, though, should be more than capable of handling the extra workload, as it appears to be one of the strengths of the Portland Jacks. They consist of TJ Maddox, Mickey Lyons, Carmelo Green, Romeo Clay, Madison Jeff, Sid Romer, and the closer Rico Jones. I wouldn't count the Portland Jacks to put up too many runs this year, as the lineup is kind of on the slower side and not much power. Kevin D'Angelo looks to start off at second base, Rick Lysander at third, Todd Sargent at first, Hubie Wagner will be in left field, Daryl Phelps in right, while Solomon Solano looks to get a lot of time in the DH spot, Casey Carter will be catching, Howard Holzman at short, and Vince Harrison looks to round out the bottom of the lineup in center field. We stay on the west coast as we check out the next team in the western division, the Sacramento Spanners. They play in small Pamoco Park, which is a grass playing field and has a capacity of 36,500. The Spanners have a decent starting rotation with one through four being solid and the fifth spot being a point of weakness. The starting rotation consists of Ace Turner Marshall, Dave Barnes, Skeeter Boggs, Wilson Calhoun, and the questionable Rob Geddon. The bullpen is considered to be average to above average as they have Ricky Bolton, Harvey Nixon, Eddie Simmons, Henson Leonard, Carney Thornton, Ozzie Reyna, and the closer Justin Beckwell. The projected starting lineup should be decent, but don't expect a lot of runs out of the Spanners. Phil Garber will be leading off in center field, Mike Gerke at shortstop, Domingo Pena will be in right field, and left field will be Kelvin Thurmond, at first base Ricky Guerrera, Damon DeLeon on the other hot corner at third, Roger Willingham looks to be the DH, Bryce O'Leary will be catching, and Mariano Hernandez will be at second base. We continue south as we check out the Phoenix Ashes, who play in Mogro Farm Field, a small field with a capacity of 44,000 and a grass playing surface. The starting rotation looks to be one of the strongest in the league, as it consists of Tony Lucas, Donnie Lee Gross, Hidalgo Alvarez, Kevin Lee, and Kent Yannick. This starting rotation should get plenty of strikeouts. When the ball is handed over to the bullpen, there should be plenty of confidence for whoever takes the ball to relieve the starter. The bullpen consists of John Bielski, Dwight DePino, Dustin Hoyt, Kelly Deshane, Todd Hampa, Chick Schramm, and the closer, Rex Dooley. There is not a weakness in this bullpen, and this looks to be one of the best starting staff or the one of the best pitching staffs in the league. The projected starting lineup for the Phoenix Ashes will be center fielder Tom Steiner leading off, Mo Wilkinson at first base, Mike St. Clair in right field, Ellis Derlinger in left field, the speedy Norberto Soto, DH, Wade Allen at third base, Cesar Trevino catching, Jody Campbell at short, and Rico Santana at second base. Next up in the West will be the Las Vegas Gamblers, and we here at Board Sports Network believe that the Gamblers will be the inaugural Baseball America League champions. They play in Suncoast Capital Stadium, which is a grass field and has a capacity of 53,000. The Gamblers feature a starting rotation that is solid one through three with four and five, questionable, but still good. The starting rotation will consist of Ace Angel Zeramello, Paul Stakely, Andy Gordon, Jeremiah Brown, and Mark Bethune. While the bullpen is nothing to write home about, they are still solid, but the lineup, with its power, will look to get them ahead enough in the games that the bullpen won't have to do much work. They consist of Andy Zuvella, Larry Heston, Goose Clark, Phil Lampier, Hubie Willis, and closer Deshaun Johnson. The starting lineup looks to be the strength of this team, as there is not an easy out 1-9. through nine. Cliff Pascarelli is looking to lead off in center field. Manny Armas at third base, Danny Cota at first, Mike Kettle in right field with Toby Gorin DHing. In the sixth spot will be Jesse Romaine in left field, Graham Winkle will be shortstop, batting eighth will be Damon Gelman at second, and Luis Trujillo looks to spend a majority of the time catching. We next head east for our next West Division team as we check out the Denver Wild who play in Lone Star Financial Field which is a grass surface and a capacity of 51,000. 
The starting rotation may be solid, but has a chance to falter at times as it features a Stan McDowell, Jermichael Jones, Matias Santos, Ernesto Gallegos, and Rich Kruger. The bullpen is considered average to a little above average as they'll be able to help at times, but they may still falter at times as well. They feature Alex Ojeda, Blake Wynn, Warren Mitchell, Melito Melendez, Scooter Morris, Mike Smiley, and closer Keith Guiderman. The starting lineup won't make too many pitchers shake in their cleats, but they should be solid at times. With a starting at second base will be Josh Lampham, DHing will be Romero Yadier, Kurt Swarnge will bat third, playing third base. Cleanup is looking to be Rondell Frazier at first. Junior Royal looks to patrol the outfield and center. Jay Holland will be catching. Gus Fontenot will be in left with Maury Lynn opposite him on in right field. And Matt Slodak will be batting ninth, playing shortstop. Our sixth and final team in the West Division will be the New Mexico Aztecs, who play in Classic Bank Park on the only artificial turf surface in the league with a capacity of 70,000. The Aztecs feature a decent rotation, nothing to brag about, that starts off with Ace Fumi Suzuki, Jonathan Petrie, Garrett Roddick, Brent Carlin, and Frank Brock. The Aztecs feature a bullpen that many consider one of the best in the league, as coming out of the bullpen will be Roger Schaefer, Craig Van Galder, Jim Bettinger, Tino Rodriguez, Orlando Farrell, Brooks Hamilton, and closer Steve Redshinsky. The starting lineup for the Aztecs may be what gets him in the trouble and loses some games for him this year, as Otis Terrell starts off in left field, Reggie Horner will play second, Edgar Santiago will be at first, Doug Smoles will be in right field, Jason Ackerman will be playing third base, Lamelo King will bat sixth playing center, Palmer Terry will be the designated hitter, Daryl Wolt will be catching, and Mike Vesberg will be at shortstop. For the postseason, the top two teams from each division will advance to play each other in a best-of-five game series format. The winner that comes out of the best-of-five series will then play each other for a best-of-seven series for the championship. For the postseason predictions, coming out of the East, we believe that the Brooklyn Bombers will face the Cincinnati Grays, while out of the West, the Las Vegas Gamblers will play the Denver Wild. With the Las Vegas Gamblers, our pick for the 2020 Baseball America champion. That'll wrap it up for us here at Board Sports Network for our 2020 Baseball America preview. We thank you for watching this presentation, and we ask that you please like and subscribe to follow the season and see who will become the 2020 inaugural Baseball America champion. Have a great night, everybody.